that it was really, really bad for you. And this is very interesting because humans have the ability to store food energy. So when you're not eating, you take food energy and you burn it. That is your fat stores or your sugar stores, you'll just burn it. That's the reason you don't die in your sleep every single night. So simply by letting yourself digest this food, you will prevent the fat from being stored on your body to make you sick. Nothing is more logical, yet as soon as I started talking about this, there are so many doctors that thought, oh, that's really bad, your metabolism will go down, this and that. And it turns out they're all myths. People have been fasting for thousands of years without problems. You have a solution that is completely natural, yet all the health professionals that I dealt with were saying, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it, you shouldn't do it. Instead, take your insulin, which will make you gain weight, and you'll have your diabetes. And by the way, the success rate of this sort of approach is about just about 0%. So it was very interesting because the fasting is a, is a tool because remember, and life is about balance. So there's balance between feeding and fasting. And if you feed, your insulin goes up, you store food energy. When you fast, insulin goes down, you burn food energy. So the, the key to good health is balance. It's not too much of one, it's not too much of the other. The problem these days is that we've gone too far into the feeding uh, side of things. So if you look at the number of calories that people eat, it's more than usual. But not more than that, it's about how often people eat. If you look at studies from uh, nationwide surveys, so the NHANES survey was done in 1977, and what it showed was that people ate on average three meals a day. So I grew up in the 70s, it was breakfast, lunch, dinner. If you tried to get an after-school snack, your mom would say, no, you're going to ruin your dinner. If you tried to get a bedtime snack, they'd say no. If you tried to eat in the car, they'd say, get out. So snacking was not considered acceptable in any way. Now you go to 2005, 2006, and the average number of times people eat a day is six. That is, on average, it's breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. And we think this is a good thing. It's like, but how is it good? If you eat more times in a day and you eat more total uh, food, you're going to gain weight because that's just the way it is. So why would you tell people to eat six times a day? You should be telling them to eat less times a day because as you don't eat, your body is forced to burn off that sugar, which is causing the diabetes. If you simply take that to its logical conclusion, all you have to do is extend the fasting periods and now you have a powerful therapeutic tool to treat type 2 diabetes instead of medications, but one that is completely free and completely natural. If you understand that the main problem in type 2 diabetes is the too much sugar, and it's too much insulin, which is driving all this storage of that, then you can say that, well, if the problem is too much insulin, how am I going to lower my insulin? So one of the easy ways to do that is to reduce the carbohydrates in the diet. But there really are a lot of different types of carbohydrates, and some which will have a strong insulin effect, and some that won't. So the ones you really have to avoid are the refined processed carbohydrates. So if you take something such as white bread, for example, it's not natural, it's not a natural product. You've taken the wheat berry, you've taken off all the fiber, you've taken off all the fat, and really left a product that is very highly concentrated in glucose, and then you crush it into a very fine powder, which lets your body absorb it super quick. So we know that when you crush stuff into a powder, it gets absorbed. So if you think about uh, illicit drugs like cocaine, for example, there's a reason they crush it into powder because it gets absorbed very quickly, unnaturally quickly. The same happens when you grind uh, flour in one of these new mechanical processing uh, plants. It gets ground into very fine powder. If you throw flour in the air, for example, you get this big uh, cloud of dust because it's a very, very fine powder. Um, as opposed to, uh, say, a wheat berry, which is a giant berry. So when you absorb that glucose so quickly, it's a bit unnatural, and your insulin level spikes very high. And the problem with type 2 diabetes is too much insulin. So those refined carbohydrates 
are not that good for you. On the other hand, you have carbohydrates, the sort of unprocessed carbohydrates, a lot of leafy vegetables, even some of the start, more starchy vegetables that have a lot of fiber, a lot of bulk are unprocessed. Remember, they're not ground into a fine powder, so the rise in glucose is much slower, and the fiber actually acts sort of like an antidote to this, in that it slows down the absorption of it, the glucose doesn't rise as quickly, and therefore the insulin doesn't rise as quickly. So when you compare the glycemic index, which is an index of how high your blood glucose goes, which is a good proxy for how high your blood insulin goes, with uh, carbohydrate-containing foods, what you find is that the processed carbohydrates are very, very high insulin effect. And the unprocessed carbohydrates have very, very low insulin effect. So therefore, if you're eating carbohydrates, then you should choose the sort of whole unprocessed carbohydrates, a lot of leafy vegetables, but other unprocessed carbohydrates, and maybe avoid the sort of uh, refined cereals, the breakfast cereals, and of course, uh, sugar is really the main, main problem. I think you can still get nutrition by eating uh, plant foods if you, if you like. You can get them from animal foods as well, but these micronutrients in plants, um, there's nothing wrong with eating a plant-based diet, actually. It's really about the insulin effect. So eating a plant-based diet that is sort of white bread, sugar, and french fries is not good. If you eat a whole plant-based diet based on lots of leafy vegetables and unprocessed uh, carbohydrates, you can do very well. So, in fact, you can look at places like Okinawa, where they ate mostly sweet potato, a lot of unprocessed foods, but very high in carbohydrates. They did fine. What they're not eating, a lot of sugar, and they're not eating any processed foods. So you have to be aware that I'm not against carbohydrates per se. You can do very well with carbohydrates. It's really insulin effect. So the insulin effect depends on two things. One is the, the processing that goes into it. Uh, and two is the frequency of how you eat. If you look at traditional societies or even go back to 1970s America, you're eating three times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay, you're eating from, say, 8 in the morning to 6 at night. 10 hours, maybe 12 hours of eating. 12 hours of fasting. Great. You're nicely in balance. Now, the minute we get up, people say, oh, you got to start eating. And keep eating until you go to bed. And it's like, well, now you went from, say, 7 a.m. when you wake up. Somebody told you that the minute you, you, you wake up, you got to start shoving, like, food in your mouth till like 11 p.m., now all of a sudden you're spending your whole day feeding and no fasting, and you're completely out of balance. And then you wonder why <laughs> that you're getting sick. It's because you haven't balanced the feeding and the fasting. So again, if you look at it simplistically, all you need to do is put that back in balance. How? Well, if you had too much feeding, you need to do more fasting, and that will put you back in balance.